days, right? <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak on the agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those of you who wish to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak into the microphone. Each side, those wishing to speak in favor of an item, those wishing to speak in opposition to an item, will have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided amongst all persons wishing to speak. If you're here opposing rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what's called the protest petition. A protest petition can be very helpful to those residents who live in a rezoning area. Please consult the planning department and staff for any details on the protest petition and they will be happy to help you. You should keep in contact, constant touch with the planning department as to when your case will go before the elected officials for a final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative. So if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Can we have roll call? Commissioner Boyd. Commissioner Beachwood. Commissioner Beelan, Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Gibbs, Commissioner, I apologize, Vice Chair Harris, Present. Chair Jones, Present. Commissioner Lamb, Present. Commissioner Huff, Commissioner Paget, Here. Commissioner Smusky has an excused absence. Commissioner Whitley? Present. Commissioner Winders? Present. Thank you. Before we go further, I want to welcome the two new commissioners, the um, return of uh, Commissioner Huff and Walters. They're at the end. I want to welcome them to the Planning Commission. And we'll move on down to agenda item three, adjustment to the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and members of the Commission, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, as your Vice Chair and Parliamentarian very kindly reminded me, uh, tonight, according to your bylaws, is a required time for uh, elections for your Chair and Vice Chair for the coming year. So I would ask that we add item 7B, which would be elections. Um, you all can either vote tonight or you can choose to defer to October, but we do need to consider it since the bylaws require that the September meeting be when that's considered. Uh, also, I would like to quickly certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the requirements of law and there are affidavits to that effect on file with the planning department. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Can we have approval of the minutes? So moved. Second. That's been moved and properly second. Um, all those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All those opposed, let it be known by raising your right hand. Motion is moved, passed with 11 to 0. All right, thank you. We hope we'll open the uh, public hearing for Hope Crossing 2 Plan Amendment Case A130004 and Zoning Case Z1300011. Good evening. I'm Laura Woods with the Planning Department. This is Hope Crossing 2, Plan Amendment Case A13-00004. The applicant, Stewart Engineering, proposes to change the future land use des designation for certain properties in East Durham from industrial and low density residential to low medium density residential. The properties are located just east of Junction Road, north of Independence Avenue, and west of Twin Lakes Park. This is approximately 30 acres in size. According to the applicant, the proposed use will be more compatible with surrounding land use patterns than the current land use designations. The proposed use is a reasonable transition between industrial land to the north 
and existing low density residential uses to the west and south. According to the applicant, the proposed land use will also provide an increased opportunity to serve future residential demand of uh, future residential demand in East Durham. Here are the four criteria used by planning staff to evaluate plan amendment proposals. Let's look at the first. Is the proposed use consistent with adopted plans and policies? Staff concurs with the applicant that the proposal supports orderly development patterns. It takes advantage of existing urban services and avoids leapfrog non-contiguous scattered development within the urban growth area. The second criteria is the proposed land use compatible with existing and or future land use patterns. As we see in the picture, the land to the north is designated industrial. Most of that land is vacant. The land to the northeast is designated medium density residential. To the east, as I stated previously, is an existing park. And to the west and south are low density residential uses. The third criteria, does the proposed land use create substantial adverse impacts? The industrial land, the proposal provides um, an effective transition from the industrial lands north of the site and the medium resident density residential designation to the east and low density residential to the south. Also, according to the recently completed Durham Industrial Land Study, the Durham Planning Department did not conclude that any of the properties in question were prime industrial lands. Therefore, there would be no substantial adverse impacts. The, fourth, the fifth criteria, is the site adequate in shape and size to accommodate the proposed land use? Yes, it's approximately 30 acres and it is of sufficient size and shape to accommodate low, medium density, density residential uses in the suburban tier. Therefore, uh, the proposal meets all criteria and staff recommends approval. Ms. Wolf, that completes my um, presentation, Ms. Wolf will present the associated zoning codes. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. And this is zoning case Z1300011. Can't, can't get much closer. I, I believe it's, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, this case, Hope Crossing 2, the applicant is uh, Stewart Engineering. This is mostly in the city's jurisdiction at this time. There is a 0 0.29 acre sliver that is currently in the county's jurisdiction. Uh, there is a, a pending annexation and initial zoning associated with this request, and they'll all catch up at the next um, uh, governing, at the governing body hearing. Um, they should catch up and be heard at the same time. The request um, is from a number of uh, existing zoning districts, industrial light, residential suburban multifamily with a development plan, residential suburban eight with a development plan, residential suburban eight, no development plan, residential suburban 10 with a development plan, residential suburban 20, to the requested district of planned development residential 6.000. The site is 29.914 acres and the proposed use is for a residential subdivision. The site uh, is comprised of four parcels at um, 299 Chorley Road. It's south of Junction Road, uh, shown to the north and north of Independence Avenue, uh, which is just south of this red uh, graphic here. It isn't in, in the suburban tier. It is in the FJB watershed protection overlay. It is in the Eastern Durham Open Space Plan. It is adjacent to Twin Lakes Park, as you saw in Ms. Wood's presentation. And there, there, it is also uh, surrounded by residential um, development to the west. The request satisfies the uh, standards for the PDR district, the requested district. They are specifying a maximum of six units per acre on the development plan. 
which uh, equals 128 residential units. The existing conditions of this site are shown here. There is a stream identified running um, east-west through the site. There's also a sanitary sewer easement uh, following the stream. It is identified with a buffer. Um, there are some wetlands uh, on the western portion of the site, um, uh, the, and the site is mostly wooded. This graphic shows the proposed conditions of the plan. Um, it has uh, several access points, one on Chorley Road, which leads up to Junction Road, uh, and one to, I can't quite read it, to Do um, Dodson Street is an existing road that's going to be uh, required to be closed at the site plan stage, and Mansfield is the other uh, connection. There's also a proposed uh, road through the site, Midland Terrace Extension, which will also provide access. It does show a potential stream crossing uh, with associated with Mid Midland Terrace Extension, and there are a number of driveways shown uh, uh, on the perimeter of the site onto the existing right-of-way. And along with that, there's a number of commitments. I may have mentioned some of them. Uh, 100 maximum of 128 residential units, uh, one potential stream crossing, four external and two internal site access points. The internal site access points are shown on to Midland Terrace extension. The maximum impervious surface is 70% for the site, and tree preservation is shown at 20%. The, there's graphic commitments associated with this, which include the internal and external access points and the lo location of tree preservation areas. There's a number of text commitments as well. Dedication of right-of-way for Midland Terrace Extension, de dedication of right-of-way along Chorley Road, and I'm summarizing here, construction uh, on Chor of Chorley Road with sidewalk from Junction Road to the site, um, turn lanes on Junction Road at Chorley Road, Mansfield Avenue construction with sidewalk from Belmont to the site, as well as this, uh, I mentioned the street closing application for Dodson Street. There are some d design commitments associated with the request. What this does is allow uh, the, the range of housing types uh, to be decided later. Uh, single family residential does not require design commitments to be made at the zoning stage. Uh, however, because they're here, um, the applicant has the option to do single family, but also does have the opportunity to do other housing types. Uh, other multifamily housing types if that is the end product. This request, again, is not consistent with the future land use map. Uh, you heard the pres presentation by Ms. Woods. Uh, it is consistent with our other comprehensive plan policies that apply to this site. And if the plan amendment is approved, this request would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And I'll leave the map up if you need to look at it. Okay, thank you. We have one person signed up to speak. Mr. Uh, George Danziel. You have 10 minutes. Good evening, uh, Chairman Jones and, and uh, commissioners. My name is George Stanziel with Stewart. Uh, I live at 115 Cofield Circle in Durham. Um, I wanted to just give you a, um, I, I won't, I won't uh, uh, bore you with all the facts because the, the staff did a great job in, in giving you really all the background that you need. I did want to talk to you just a little bit about um, about uh, habitat and what uh, you know what its mission is. Uh, it began its work here in Durham in 1985. Uh, each year, uh, Habitat has built over 20 homes uh, in the Durham community uh, by Habitat staff. We have actually there there are you know staff members that that build these homes as well as community and corporate partners, uh, co co corporate uh, volunteers. The goal is to increase that number of homes to 30 to 35 affordable housing units per year. Uh, the homes average 1,200 square feet. 
and are sold at an average of uh, $110,000. <coughs> and these are done through uh, no interest loans. Future homeowners uh, select interior features and are many times volunteers during the building process, investing their own uh, sweat equity in the, in the construction of these houses. Um, the homeowner is expected to pay approximately $525 a month uh, on their loans. And to date, uh, Habitat has helped over 600 families, uh, both in Durham and abroad. Um, so we've made a, a, a significant impact in the um, affordable housing community. Um, you see here some of the homes that are, that are, that are built. Um, most of the homes look like this. Um, they're very nicely done. Uh, and, it, and, and they're done with awesome uh, volunteers that, that work very long and hard to build these homes from in the community. They're green homes, so, th so there's a lot of uh, you know, energy conservation. Um, and Habitat works with many, many different groups, civic and corporate groups, uh, and, and individuals throughout the, the community to, to transform communities, really. Um, and our focus has been in, in East Durham. Uh, here you see some of the sponsors um, that, have, uh, that are part of uh, the Habitat mission. Um, you s you've seen where the site is. Uh, the, uh, the, s the subdivision, the subdivision to the northeast there, uh, is is actually ha uh, Hope Crossing One. So this is this is essentially a continuation of, of an existing neighborhood. Um, again. Land use request is for medium density residential, four to eight units per acre. We're committing to six units per acre. And as you can see on the right hand image, uh, there's a, you know, similar land use uh, just adjacent. Uh, from a zoning perspective, again, uh, the request is for PDR6 um, uh, for up to 128 single family residential units. And as you can, uh, you can see, there, there is a significant amount of residential surrounding, uh, surrounding the site. Again, you see Hope Crossing One there. That's that's a generally built-out community now, uh, with its home, uh, th its own uh, homeowners association, functioning homeowners association, and Hope Crossing Two would be an extension of that, of that uh, existing community. And the last thing is that our elected officials, you know, have have a great interest in the development of affordable housing, um, as many of you may have heard, and a number of our. Uh, past cases for residential development, you know, there have been requests uh, for s uh, private developers to, to include uh, affordable housing within residential projects. So, um, uh, you know, Habitat is, a, is one of the key participants in the effort of, of bringing affordable housing to the community. And uh, uh, we just ask for your consideration. And I have with me here um, Blake Strayhorn, uh, president and CEO of, um, of Habitat. Raise your hand. Thank you very much. And um, we have had two neighborhood meetings, neither of which were required. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we feel like we've worked with the neighbors. We've let them know, uh, you know, in detail the process, what our intentions were, and so forth. Um, so I'll leave it at that and answer any questions. All right, thank you. We don't have anyone else signed up to speak. If I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners, if we have anyone. All right. Mr. Harris. Uh, <clears throat> to the north, south, and west, or single family residents, you indicated you had two meetings. How well were they intended by the residents? And second question to staff, were the residents notified of the meeting tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were speaking with them. Um, the first meeting we had probably 15 residents or so. There's uh, there were members of the uh, there were a few members of the Hope One community. There were some other just residents uh, from around the site, and also members of the uh, church that is adjacent to the site um, that owns a piece of land actually uh, just um, uh, south of Junction Road and and. Uh, west of Cor uh, Chorley Road, um, we had another, and that was that was done probably 
three or four months ago um, prior to us submitting for, for the uh, application. And then uh, a couple of weeks last week, we had another meeting. We told them that we would come back and update them on the process, where we were, if there were any changes were made, and uh, we did that. And I would say that there were probably four or five residents that were there, members of the church and, and a couple of residents. Commissioner Harris, or Vice Chair Harris, uh, to address your question about was the residents notified, we do have affidavits on record that we have satisfied the notification requirement, which for the plan amendment is 1,000 feet for property owners, and for the zoning is 600 feet for property owners and 1,000 feet for neighborhood organizations that are registered with us. So we do have that on file. Those letters have been sent. Okay, and so we also yes. um, post a zoning placard on site and do the newspaper ad. Okay. <coughs> Any other commissioners want to speak? Yep. All right. Uh, Mr. Gibbs, then Ms. Uh, Beachwood. Uh, just one question. Uh, had, has Parks and Rec been notified or spoken to uh, since this, is, this abuts their property? And I have no idea what their uh, <clears throat> how act, how they control access to parks? Uh. Well, they've certainly been notified because they're an adjacent property owner. They did not come to any of the meetings. Um, I frankly, in all my years, I've never seen them come to neighborhood meetings. Um, you know, when they were in in the immediate area. Um, Mike, access to that park is from where? From uh, so. Yeah, if, you know, it's actually from the. Um, it's from Chandler. You can see Chandler Road? from the southeast. Yeah. Coming up from the southeast. Yeah. Right. I, <clears throat> I was just curious, uh, and I, at first I thought there, uh, well, there there is plenty of vegetation separating these, so that's uh, and I see that from the aerial view, so that looks fine. There is, and also on the site, you know there. Uh, as Amy said, there's a there's a very significant stream that runs through the middle with 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 very significant buffers. So it's likely, uh, even though we you know we've talked about a potential stream crossing, it's unlikely that we'll do that. And this project will be built sort of in two pieces: one to the north, one to the south, with access from from both sides. Uh, that, and that reminds me of something. Uh, where is Midland Terrace? Drive road or whatever. I, I know the name of this road is going to be an extension, but it just oh, sounds oh, oh, familiar I'm sorry. to me. I'm sorry. Let me find. Let me. So, so if you look, if if you look at the the right hand side of the green site there, the right hand, the entire right hand side, uh, there there'll be a there's a right of way that we're providing that will run essentially along the entire right hand side all the way up to the main road uh, and it's uh, we're dedicating various widths to accommodate you know uh, uh, transportation I well, don't know what the status of building that road is but we're dedicating the right-of-way well I, yeah I, I know where the proposed dedicated roadway is but it's being called Midland Terrace uh, extension where is Midland Terrace Road itself? Because I, I, I have heard over, another one. That can, crosses over maybe, Camden. Maybe transportation can answer you answer that. Do you know where Dearborn Drive is? Yeah. When you take Dearborn Drive south, it becomes Midland Terrace. And it crosses over Camden and crosses over toward Street. Cheek, Gear Street to Cheek. Right. Back over that way. Yeah, I, I knew I'd heard of it before. I didn't know if there would be a duplication. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Beachwood. I had a question for George. You mentioned during your during your talk that uh, that um, private developers were looking to try to coordinate and work with you uh, on the habitat projects. Did you, is that what you were trying to say? No, I was just saying that that um, the the volunteers that help build habitat homes come from 
you know, corporations oh, and, you know, individuals, school, you know, their churches. So there are, there, you know, there, a great deal of, this, of the labor that's put into yes. these homes are, are from people volunteering their time, corporations. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to remind if, if um, the rest of the commissioners weren't aware of it that the habitat has changed dramatically in recent years and, and really right along they have and the quality of housing, especially the quality of the green features of the housing, um, are, are, are a trendsetter and a, and a benchmark for other low-income housing projects. The quality is, is shockingly good. So these will, these will, I don't doubt any, for a minute, these are gonna be quality homes and will be um, very much appreciated and very much needed. I'm very proud to say that I'm a board member at Habitat, so thank you for that. All right. Any, uh, Commissioner uh, Whitley? Yeah, I have a question. Um, first of all, I want to tell you um, how proud I am of Habitat and the work that is done in East Durham. Thank you. Um, when I was in the neighborhood looking at this, one of the neighbors told me that that land floods a lot. So, and I'm thinking that you're going to be not putting in trees, you'll be cutting down trees. So, there's a, there's a small, there's a very small piece of floodplain up in the very uh, uh, northeast corner of the site. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can't build there. There's also, as, as I said, a very significant stream. It runs through essentially, you know, uh, uh, northwest to southeast through the site with very, very large buffers. Uh, my sense is that there might be some, you know, uh, flooding down through, you know, through that creek, which is, you know, why there's a creek there and why there are buffers. But as far as the the land that's developable, that's not a problem. And of course, we'll have to, you know, deal with uh, stormwater runoff and uh, BMPs and so forth. All right. I would like to make a motion that we will make the motion on the the map change first, and then come back to. Okay. I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve Z one three zero 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 one one. The plan amendment first, okay. All right, I'd like to amend my motion. <laughs> I thought I'd just ask that question. Um, Hope Crossing, uh, that I, <laughs> I move that we approve Hope Crossing 2 as A130004. So moving probably second, all those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All right. Motion has been passed, 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Get motion on the zoning case. I'd like to move, like to move that uh, we approve case number Z1300011. Second. So moved and properly second, all those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Can you say that? Repeat that with the mic. Oh. The motion has been passed 11 to 0. All right. Thank you. We'll move down to item 6A, Mineral Springs Residential, case Z1300001. I guess Amy Wolf again with the planning department presenting the next zoning case for you. Mineral Springs Road Residential, case Z130001. The applicant in this case is the city of Durham through Eden's Lamb Corp. This is one of, um, this case is presently in the county's jurisdiction and also has an, 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 an annexation and a utility extension agreement associated with this request. This uh, zoning 
be, will become the initial zoning of the property and the council will consider it all um, at the same meeting. The, the request is from Plan Development Residential 4.000 and Residential Suburban 20 and Residential Rural to Plan Development Residential 4.180 total acreage is 9.09 .09 and the proposed use is for a single family residential. The request is two parcels at 1525 and 1607 South Mineral Springs Road. It's south of Del Mar Drive, which is uh, where my pointer is now. Uh, it also has frontage on Callendell Lane. Uh, there are, again, there's two lots. This is in the suburban tier. Uh, there is a uh, bike plan identifies a bike lane along South Mineral Springs Road. It's in the East, Eastern Durham Open Space Plan and the Little Lick Creek Open Space Study. Um, there's no rec specific recommendations of those latter plans, um, but there is a recommendation from the bike plan for a proposed lane on South Mineral Springs Road. Um, I do want to point out on page one of the staff report, I indicate that the ex existing residential would allow for 13 uh, lots. Um, that was just for the PDR portion. In total, the site would accommodate 25 total lots existing. The request does meet the minimum requirements for the uh, plan development residential standards. The requested zoning is 4.180, uh, which could, um, if developed under 24% impervious surface, which could yield 33 uh, lots. The existing conditions of the site are shown here. The po portion of the site uh, with these two frontages on South Mineral Springs Road is cleared. There is a structure on the southern portion. The rear of the properties, which front on Callendale Lane, uh, are tree covered. There is a stream and an existing pond as well on the eastern portion of the site. This graphic shows the proposed conditions. It shows your site access points. There's three of them, one on Callendale, one to the RR portion of, of this property, and as well as a pedestrian only access onto South Mineral Springs Road. It does show a, a potential stream crossing and a number of commitments, which include a maximum of 33 single family units, the stream crossing, um, the access points I mentioned, a maximum of 70% impervious surface if the stream buffer was increased to 100 feet, also tree preservation at 20% minimum. Uh, everything shown on the plan is a commit committed element, uh, as a graphic commitment. There are a number of text commitments, including um, the, the housing type for single family, a minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet, and dedication of right of way um, onto South Mineral Springs Road um, to uh, accommodate a 40 foot uh, width from the center line, as well as the pedestrian connection that was shown on the graphic. This request is consistent with the future land use designation. Uh, as low to medium density residential, which uh, is a range from four to eight dwelling units per acre. And also, um, <coughs> excuse me, the other conditions, uh, applicable policies of the comprehensive plan um, are satisfied, uh, or this plan is consistent with that as well. So staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. I'll answer any questions. All right, thank you. We have one person signed up to speak tonight, Jared Edens. You have 10 minutes. Uh, good evening, Jared Edens with the Edens Land Corp. My office is at 2144 Page Road in Durham. Here representing my clients, uh, Kenny Bedford and Jerry Owen, who are the property owners of the two tracks in question. I appreciate Amy's summary of the project. I'm just going to touch on, uh, reiter reiterate a couple of points, not take up too much of your time. Uh, we are calling for 4.18 units per acre, which is consistent with the future land use plan. Uh, maximum number of lots of uh, 33 single family homes. I do want to touch on, uh, I think it's on page three of the staff report at the top where the discussion about the stream buffer width 50 feet versus 100 feet. 
uh, you know, 50 feet is shown on the plan, which is what the required buffer width is for impervious up to 24%. I mean, at this time, not knowing who the end user is, uh, not knowing how much road impervious there's going to be because the site's not been designed yet, we won't know until site plan stage whether the buffer is 50 feet or 100 feet. If we go over 24% impervious, then the buffer would be 100 feet uh, on the project, but the required minimum is a 50 foot uh, noose river buffer. Um, Amy mentioned our pedestrian connection out to Mineral Springs Road. Uh, I do want to point out that of the 20% of the site that's going to be tree coverage, we're committing to all of that being tree preservation. It's not a case of where we're uh, tearing down trees only to regrade and plant trees in its place. We're going to save 20% of the tree coverage on the property. Uh, streams and wetlands were delineated by our consultant. They've been verified by, by the City of Durham and the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we had a neighborhood meeting in March. Um, very few attendees. There were, there were two couples who attended the meeting. I've received no opposition, uh, no contact from anyone since that time. Um, and I live in this, in this part of Durham. I live in Brightleaf. I, I think the project fits very well with what's going on on Mineral Springs Road. It's surrounded on three sides by Ashton Hall, which is a, a very similar product and lot size to what you're going to see on this property. So it's, to me, it's just filling in the missing piece of the puzzle there. Uh, if you've got any questions, I would be glad to answer them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll uh, close the public hearing and bring it back before the <coughs> commission. Do we have anyone who wants to speak? No. Can we get a motion? Well, oh, sorry. Um, Commissioner Huff. Um, I'm curious about this uh, access to the um, property that isn't that you all don't own. Is that a just a right of way that you're putting in there? Is it a stub out? What is it? It's a, a code requirement mm -hmm. uh, to provide access to, I think the code says all four cardinal directions because uh, staff and I discuss this often. And uh, so what we were allowed to do by staff was to just show a right of way connection. Uh, I didn't want to, to commit to building a road that stops at a single family residence's property line because I wouldn't like that. I'm sure they wouldn't like that. So staff agreed to allow us to dedicate just a right of way if the owner of that property ever wanted to redevelop or, or get a driveway onto our internal road they'll have access to it but if not it'll just remain green thank you uh, commissioner gibbs my question uh, and you partially answered it about the stream buffer and density uh, would that be a commitment uh, and I'm not asking for one, I'm asking the question, uh, depending on the density of the development, whether or not the, uh, the 33 units uh, with the 24% uh, impervious surface, uh, those two ratios, uh, is that something that, will, that is a commitment along the way? Well, the commitment is, is to a maximum of 33 units. And you know, I, I, I guess I slightly disagree in the staff report says to, to basically says to develop 33 units, you're going to end up with a 100 foot, or if you have a 100 foot buffer, you, you can't develop 33 units. And I mean, I'm not sure, I haven't done the calculations and until the final design is performed. We don't know how many lots actually fit in there. But what I'm committing to is it will comply with the ordinance standards when the site plan is submitted. So. Uh, we're, we are maxed at 33. Uh, you're not required to do 33. We're just maxed at 33. And if we do the calculations at site plan and we're over 24% impervious, which is, again, dependent on the end user, the builder, what kind of homes do they want to build? I don't know that right now. How much square footage of impervious do they need per lot? I don't know that right now. But if you add all that up and we're over 24%, then the stream buffer would become 100 feet wide. Uh, to the staff, uh, does this square with? Uh, yes, the I did a back of the envelope uh, calculation, and it just based on very rough figures. It seems like if you doubled the existing bu buffer, you might lose a lot or two, and that's considering the minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet. So I don't know for sure, but back of the envelope co um, calculation says a unit or two might be lost. If, if it were over 
I don't know if we might get into some kind of issue with the 50 foot versus 100 foot buffer, which would impact your, your project. Uh, but anyway, I, I think you've answered my questions pretty, pretty good. And thank you. Commissioner Harris. Uh, and Amy, were all the notifications sent out for this particular uh, piece of property also? Okay. Yes, sir, they were. Okay. All right, thank you. If we don't have any more uh, questions, we can get a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Zoning case Z1300001. I'll second. All right, so we moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All right. Motion has passed 11 to 0. Thank you. We'll move down to Hudson property case. Z one three zero 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 one zero. Thank you, Amy Wolf again with the planning department. Our final zoning map change request for the evening is Hudson property. KZ one three zero 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 one zero. The applicant is Davis Moore Capital. This is within the city's jurisdiction and the request is from residential suburban 20 to office institutional with the development plan. Uh, the site is 7.99 acres and it's for a proposed use of up to 150,000 square feet of office space. The site is one parcel at 117 East uh, NC 54 highway. It does have frontage on Crooked Creek Parkway to the north so it is a double frontage lot. It's in the suburban tier and the suburban transit area. It's also within the FJB Watershed Protection Overlay District and the major transportation corridor overlay associated with Interstate 40. There is a condition on the bike plan shown um, that impacts the site along uh, NC 54. And the applicant, as I'll get to, has made some proffers on that in that regard. Um, this plan does meet the standards of the office institutional district as shown here, uh, a summary anyways. Um, the existing conditions do show there's a flood plain on the eastern portion of the site associated with an off-site uh, stream. And uh, the site has previously been cleared, uh, but there, are, there, are, there is some vegetation uh, on the fringe. The proposed conditions show the building envelope, the site access areas, one from 54, one from Crooked Creek Parkway. It does uh, show your tree preservation area, which is in the floodplain. The building envelope does stay outside of the fl uh, floodplain. And there's a number of commitments. Uh, the range of floor area will be from 50,000 to 150,000 square feet. The two access points, and they're committing to 60% impervious surface and a 10% tree preservation. There are a number of transportation commitments as shown on this slide. They do uh, satisfy the, the bike plan proposal for the bike lane along the, the frontage of 54, and they do make transit improvement uh, proffer for the existing bus stop. There's a number of design commitments for this non-residential project. Uh, the, the summary is on this slide as well as in your staff report. And the request is consistent with the future land use map of our comprehensive plan which designates this site as office and recreation and open space uh, which matches the, the floodplain line. This request does satisfy or is consistent with the pol applicable policies of the comprehensive plan and staff determines that for that reason, consistency with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinance, um, this, this site is consistent. I can answer any questions. All right, thank you. I don't have anyone signed up to speak. Is that correct? Yes? Okay. Sorry. Come up, state your name. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Bob Zumwalt with McAdams, and uh, I am director of our planning design group. And I'm here uh, on behalf of 
Davis Moore Capital tonight representing the project. Austin Coons here with me as well as uh, Earl Llewellyn from Kimley Horn. Uh, as Amy stated, this is about an eight acre site at the intersection of 54 and Fayetteville. Uh, the site once contained a mobile home park. It's part of the reason it was, it was uh, is cleared now. It's now vacant. There is a 100 year flood plain and a stream along the eastern edge. As Amy mentioned, we're, we're not proposing any, uh, any impacts to the uh, flood plain or any stream buffers. We'll have to connect a sewer at some point down at the bottom of the site, but our building envelopes and parking envelopes are all out of all the environmental areas. Um, this is kind of the, one of the last remaining sort of infill parcels at this key intersection at Fayetteville and 54. And um, for that reason, you know, my client believes this will be an ex excellent opportunity for a class A office space at this uh, office development at this location. As Amy mentioned, the plan is for office on the future land use, and that's what we're doing. Um, while the plans for the site haven't been file finalized, we will be somewhere probably in that 100, 100 plus thousand square feet, not quite sure yet. Um, but all the access will be, as shown in the development plan, we'll have a right in, right out access off of 54 and a full movement access off of Crooked Creek Parkway. Um, Kimley Horns completed a traffic study. It's been reviewed by DOT and the city and any recommendations from the study, we've committed to, to making those improvements, which would include restricting our access on 54 to a right in, right out and building the bike lane through the front edge of our site. And, and we'd also be dedicating some additional right of way to accommodate um, those improvements. In an effort to keep our neighbors in the loop, we did have a neighborhood meeting with uh, adjoining property owners back in March at one of the nearby churches. We had two couples from the neighborhood behind who came and then a representative from the apartment complex behind the Kroger. I'm not sure what it's called now. It kind of changes names a lot. <laughs> um, most people were really just kind of glad we weren't proposing retail. Um, there weren't a whole lot of issues that came out of it, just some questions about timing and we have really not um, had any additional concerns come to our attention from the neighbors since that meeting. Um, in closing, I just uh, would hire or would point out a few of the commitments that we're making that Amy mentioned. Transit shelter at the bus stop on 54, um, a connection from the transit shelter into our site, uh, the bike lane and the widening on 54, maximum of 150,000 square feet of office, and then a 30 foot wide buffer along Crooked Creek Parkway. Um, we're here to answer any questions. We'd love to have your support. Austin's here. He signed up to speak, but he doesn't really need to speak unless you have questions. I just had him sign up so that he'd be available if you needed him. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. We won't force him to speak either, so that's, that's pretty good. So if we don't have any, uh, any other speakers, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commission. I have um, Commissioner Davis who wants to speak. Dean I did have a question, but I think I answered it by just reading. Um, staff, correct me if I'm wrong, the maximum height is 50 feet, correct? Yeah. Um, th there's a building already, well, okay, so I guess I know the height maximum. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Any, okay, uh, Commissioner Winders. Did I see on, on uh, is there gonna be a, um, did you have a median strip on 54? Yeah, if, in order to build the, to restrict, to ride it right out, we will be putting uh, a median in 54, yeah. And that'll just be a little concrete thing. Pro probably, yeah, it'll be a concrete median. In the middle. Right. That's what yeah. median means. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, can we get a motion if we have no one else wishing to speak? Yes. Mr. Chair. I move we approve uh, zoning case Z1300010, the Hudson property. Uh, all right. Second. Second. All right. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Any opposition? No. The motion has been approved 11 to 0. Thank all right. Thank you. We move down to item 7A. Any announcements? What do we have next month, staff? Good evening again, commissioners. I want to quickly, I'll let Scott summarize uh, next month's cases, but I did want to point out at your seats uh, in front of you is a citizen's guide to planning, uh, fourth edition. This is kind of a classic text in the field. Uh, explains principles of planning and plain English. 
kind of want to provide this to you as a follow-up to our um, retreat from last year. Probably not a lot you don't know at this point, but it's certainly a handy resource guide, and we hope you use it as, as you see fit. Um, Scott, do you want to give an overview of next month's uh, agenda? We have uh, three zoning cases scheduled for next month. Okay. Uh, we want to thank the planning department for this um, piece of literature, and I'm sure it'll come in handy. So there's not any other announcements. We'll move down to item 7B, which is the election of officers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll uh, ask for any nominations, and if, if you'll call nominations, don't need a second. Um, any nominations for vice chair. Again, this would be for a one-year term uh, from next month's meeting through next September's meeting. Oh, okay, I guess my question is, um, since we have some new commissioners on, yeah. so we have an option, correct me if I'm wrong, to suspend the current rule and do it next month to give them time to kind of think it through, since we don't really have any nominations per se, unless everyone is absolutely happy with what we have now. That's exactly right. You can vote to suspend the rules and, and postpone this to any date you see fit. But you can also take action tonight. It's your, your choice. Okay. Any open comments? I have a what? question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, would you explain again about the city and county, you know? Sure. <laughs> um, the bylaws, and I believe the interlocal, Scott, he walked out of the room. I believe the interlocal and the bylaws call for the chairmanship and the vice chairmanship to alternate every two years uh, by jurisdiction, not necessarily by individual member. Um, Commissioner Jones is, ser is serving the end of Commissioner Mons' unexpired term. He's a city appointee. Um, Mr. Jones is a county appointee. So any of the 12, any of the members are eligible to run for either office at this point. Any other questions? So I guess before us is whether we want to hold off a month and come back and do it next month or we can do it tonight I, I personally would like to see us wait a month because we have so many new people we have so many new people it wasn't on the agenda it's not like we don't it's not like we're not happy with with what's going on but I just I feel like we have people that are brand new and, right. and are just walking in tonight so it's, it's, a, it's a lot so. no I get it trust me. and it wasn't on our agenda so frankly it wasn't even on my radar screen that we're going to do this tonight uh, waiting, I don't think waiting 30 days is going to be a big deal for people. Right. Only thing I have to say is right now it's 6.30. Next week it may be 8 o'clock and then we want to do elections. I'm sure people are going to be like, eh, let's put it out another month. I mean, are we going to study each other for another month to figure out a different or, I mean, my, my personal opinion is we have the time. Let, let's do it now. Um, it's early. You know, but if you want to wait 30 days for some inclination or I don't know, I just don't see why the 30 days is going to matter if, you know, it's, but that's just my opinion. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm really neither here nor there about it, but we, we do have two new people and two people absent. And it seems to me like if you're going to elect officers, everybody ought to be here. That's just my opinion. All right. So I'm cool with waiting a month. I'll make sure everybody has the appropriate amount of time to study and do what they need to do and meet and greet and politic and do whatever needs to be done. Um, that's cool, too. Um, so say it one more time. What, tonight? No. Yes. So the motion, so we can get a motion. Then we can kind of close this meeting out if that's okay with everyone. I make a motion that we wait until next month to do the election. Okay. So, before we, can we suspend the first rule, then do the motion? Yeah, I interpreted and Commissioner B. Beachwood's uh, motion to suspend the rules and okay. move the elections okay. to October. Okay. Was there a second for that? Second. All right, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All right. All those, any opposition, raise your right hand. <laughs> the 
the motion passed with seven for it and seven for again seven for it and four against. Okay. All right. So next month, be prepared. We'll have the zone. We'll get it moved. Um, any other announcements? No. So we don't have any announcements. We'll go ahead and adjourn. All right. Thank you. Annually in September, at a meeting in September, during the election of the chairman.